Hello and welcome back to the second video in our YouTube series using Tinkercad. In the last video you learned how to create your own account and learn how to maneuver around on the Tinkercad workspace. So now we get to start using those skills to create bigger projects and in today's video you're going to be learning how to stack different shapes in order to make your very own custom cake. So let's go ahead and get started with a brand new work plane by creating a new design. Once that loads up, I'm going to go ahead and rename this from Splanky Blad to something that will help me remember what I designed, and that is going to be a cake. I'm going to make my cake a multi-layered round cake, but I want you guys to be creative and make this cake look however you would like. This is just one way to do it. So I'm going to start with my cylinder, I'm going to plop it right down in the middle of my work plane, and I'm going to go ahead and drag that to be a decent size. However, I do want it to be round, which means I want my length and my width to be the same. So I'm going to start my cake out by making it 60 by 60. I can go ahead and move this layer around my work plane to be in the middle by just holding down and dragging on my work plane, and notice that only moving it side to side and it's staying on that light blue work plane. I'm going to leave it right there, but I do want to change the color because I'm going to make mine a rainbow ombre cake. Now I need my second layer, which means it's time to grab my second shape, which again is going to be a cylinder. And I could drop it down in the middle of my cake, but that makes it kind of hard to see and edit because it's like hiding inside it. So I'm actually just going to drop it off to the side here make it a little bit shorter and let's see if my last one was 60 by 60 I'm gonna make this one 45 by 45 now that I have it the right size that I want I can move it around but again it's just gonna hide inside so I need to find a way to lift this layer up off of my work plane so I can stack it on top to do that, I'm going to use this nifty little upside down ice cream cone or a little black cone on the top of your shape. When I click down on that when it's red, it will allow me to go ahead and lift up or push down that shape above or below your work plane. So I'm going to go ahead and lift that up to about here. Notice I can't move it side to side anymore, I'm only lifting it up and down. I'm going to drop it about there. And now when I click on it and drag, it's gonna go back to moving from side to side. I'm gonna plop that down in what looks like the middle from this angle, but what you'll notice is that if I shift around, it's definitely not the middle from another angle. So if I look at it directly from the side, I can see how much farther I need to drop this down. Especially as we start thinking about these designs as something we could potentially 3D print, it's really important that you don't have an empty layer or objects that are floating because a 3D printer is not gonna be able to print that. Looking at it from the side, I can see it's definitely not floating above it anymore. I'm going to transition looking at it from the very top so I can make sure that it's as close to centered as possible so it looks nice. I'm going to leave that there. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab a third layer. I want this to be a yellow layer for my rainbow. I'm going to make it a lot shorter. Let's see, last one was 45, so I'm going to make this one 30. Again, I'm going to use that cone to lift my cake up off of the work plane so I can stack it, move it to the side. I'm going to go back to looking at it directly on top and then from the side so I can make sure it's not floating. They're definitely not floating. I'm going to go to my top. And I could keep adding as many layers as I wanted. So if I wanted this to actually be a rainbow, I would probably keep going until I had all the way to my top purple layer. But I'm gonna leave that up to you guys. I did a pretty good job of making these layers aligned to the middle, but as you can see, it's not perfect. There's definitely more on this side. But luckily, there's a tool to help me out with that because I may not be very good at doing this by hand, but that is the benefit of having computers to help us design things. So there is something called the align tool, which will help me center this exactly. Before I can align anything though, I need to tell the computer which shapes it's aligning. So first I need to select all three of these. To do that, I'm just gonna drag my mouse tool around all three of them, and I should see that light blue outline around each of those three shapes. Up here is my toolbar, where a lot of those helpful tools are gonna be. The align tool is this one right here. 
says align, and I will have a bunch of these black circles pop up, which is basically asking me where am I aligning all these shapes to. I want all these shapes to align to the center of this bottom layer, which means I want the center circles around the bottom layer. So the center circle on this side of the bottom layer, the center circle on this side of the bottom layer. So now if I go ahead and pivot around, I can see the align tool certainly did its job. All of my layers are perfectly aligned to the middle of that bottom layer. But what I didn't touch, you'll notice, is these three on the side right here that allow me to align up off of the work plane on what we call the Z axis. So if I did maybe accidentally press this one thinking like, oh, I just want to align everything to the middle, you'll notice all of my layers disappear. And that's not what I want. So I can go ahead and undo that by simply pressing Command Z or Control Z, depending if you're on a Mac or a PC, and it'll undo that last step. I'm back to having my perfectly aligned shapes. Now that they're perfectly aligned, I need to make sure I don't accidentally unalign them by selecting a layer and moving it around while I continue adding my decorations. So the tool to help me with that is called the group tool. It's basically going to merge all of these shapes to become one big shape. So when I move it around or add things to it, I'm not going to mess up with the work I've already done. So all three of my shapes are still selected. I can see all three of my layers outlined in blue. I'm going to group it using this tool that looks like a circle merging into a square. I click the group tool and now it is all one shape. What you'll notice is all of my work that I did coloring it to make it look pretty is now gone and it switched to one solid color. Easy fix though, if I click back on my color options, I could change the color of the whole shape if I wanted to, or I could select this multicolor option and it'll go back to the colors that it was before I had grouped it. This means that if I wanted to go back and maybe make it a blue ombre cake or a red ombre cake, I wouldn't be able to do that unless I ungrouped by clicking this and went back and edited those before regrouping. I'm not worried about that. I like the way my cake looks. Now I just want to add more decorations. To decorate my cake, I'm going to add an E for Miss Emma on the top. To do that, I'm going to switch to my text and numbers and I could drag this E out. But to make it easier, I'm going to use this work plane tool. If you'll notice, everything that's been dragged out so far has automatically been placed on my blue work plane, but I can edit which work plane things are being placed on by using the work plane tool. When I click on work plane, I get the option to select a different face. I'm going to select the top of my top layer, and then if I drag out my E, it's automatically placed on the top of that work plane, and I can zoom in and drag it around accordingly. I'm going to go ahead and edit that color to green to go with my rainbow theme, and there we go. The same process would apply if I wanted to add shapes to the side of my cake. In this case, it's even more helpful because then I don't have to rotate my shape to fit the side. Again, I'm going to select my work plane tool, select which layer of the cake I want it to be on the side of. Let's say I want to add a star, so I drag a star out, and it's already rotated the right way. I just have to resize it. So I'm going to drag it quite a bit smaller, zoom in a little bit so I can see better. I just need to push it into the side of my cake. Once I have that one star that's the right size and shape for the side of my cake, Instead of just doing this process over again, I could select the star and copy and paste it so I don't have to resize it. To do that, I could just press Command C or Control C to copy it. Then I need to reselect the side of the cake I'm pasting on and press Control or Command V. It's already rotated. All I need to do is replace it. I just now need to lift it up and down in order to make sure that it's placed directly onto the side of my cake. Perfect. I could keep doing this process to get back to my original work plane. I'm just going to select the bottom and there we are. Again, I want to see you guys get creative with this process. I'm going to go ahead and link some other tutorials that may help you get some ideas for how to design your cake, as well as some pictures of inspiration as you go ahead and design your own. 
I encourage you guys to think about what you want your future birthday cake to look like, or maybe your favorite cakes that you've seen on baking shows like Cake Boss and The Great British Bake Off. We want to see and share your guys' projects while you're working from home, so feel free to take a screenshot and share and send us your projects so we can feature them in our next video. To do that, just send it to info at stemcenterusa.com. Happy creating, and we'll see you on Thursday.